Hi, I'm Rob from Pitcher Healer, and today we're going to talk a little about how to cook herbal tea. We're releasing a new book on herbal teas, and I thought it would be a good idea just to go over some of the different ways that you can cook the herbs from. So I have four different herbs here. I have Datsao over here on the left, which is used to tonify blood. I have Gochitsa here, which is used to tonify both yin and blood. I have Gansao which is generally used as an all-purpose harmonizer, but it does, you know, tonify a little bit as well. And lastly, what we have is what my wife calls the money. This is ginseng, or renshen, and it is a very, very powerful herb. Uh, you can actually find this in most uh, Asian groceries. Each one of these herbs I found in the Korean market that we have up the street. The ginseng itself is kind of special because it's not Korean ginseng. Uh, ginseng itself, there are several different varieties. You have a Chinese ginseng. Chinese ginseng is actually stronger in tonifying qi. You have Korean ginseng, and Korean ginseng usually turns out to look a bit reddish, and it's actually called red ginseng as well. That one, while it does tonify qi, it helps to tonify yang a little bit more. And then we have American ginseng, which, believe it or not, you can actually find growing in the mountains of Pennsylvania or anywhere down the mountain range, you know, following that area. That one itself, believe it or not, tonifies both qi and yin. So it's interesting that even the herb itself can adapt to its environment and actually change its properties while still keeping most of the effect on tonifying qi. Now, when we actually cook these, I'm going to show you kind of the correct method to use ginseng because ginseng is basically a treasure. That's why my wife calls it the money. Um, there are certain pieces of the ginseng you should probably use for tea, but, there's, but the other pieces, they're usually very hard. They're hard to cut, and you can do other things with them as well. So, let's get started. So first we're going to do this the easy way. Now on the right hand side I have two different French presses. I have a large one and I have a small one. Now you can just take a couple of these herbs, throw them into the French press and just add hot water. The nice part about it is, is you just have to leave it for maybe a couple of minutes and that's really all you need. But let me show you kind of the idea behind it and maybe how much you, you would probably need to use. Now I'm going to use the big one because we want to show like the color and the herbs inside of it. So I'm going to open up the top here. And what we'll do is we'll start putting some of the herbs in. So I'm going to start with Datsao. Now Datsao has a very strong taste. At best, you probably want to use at least maybe two or three. That's kind of a, a, a normal, but you just want to be careful because sometimes you don't want to overpower the taste, especially of the other herbs. So we're just going to use two here. Then we have Gochitsa. Now Gochitsa, which was interesting because in the old uh, books, especially the Jinkwe Yaole, the uh, essential golden cabinet, they actually had Gochitsa used as a way to help with diabetes. Basically you would, well, Xiao Ke, which is kind of the Chinese idea of what diabetes is, is they have uh, four different symptoms depending on three of the symptoms. Uh, they would uh, use a special treatment for it. But this one, this one was used for people who felt thirsty all the time. And one of the treatments that they said is you just take a handful, which is about six grams, and just like this is good, all you do is you jump, dump it in. You make a tea out of it, and when it's done, you just actually eat the herb as well. So next we're going to put in some and We only need maybe three small pieces. Now, another interesting tidbit, uh, my, uh, my mentor, Dr. Zhang, he used to talk to us about uh, Gansao and talking about people in regards to like high blood pressure. Now, Gansao does have that type of feature where it dilates the blood vessels and it does make the blood pressure go higher. The thing is, is you need at least... 30 grams of it normally in a day for a long time. It, licorice is generally considered a very safe herb, but it's, uh, it's, it's um, half dosage before it shows any side effects is 30 grams. Now, just these three pieces at best 
are probably maybe four grams. So even if you do have some type of condition or you do have high blood pressure, you can monitor it when you're when you're taking guns out. But three pieces, even for a long time, is not going to you know do too much uh, to your body. Now, lastly, with the ginseng. Now, the ginseng's funny because we have this we have this tail, we have the body, and we have the head. Now, each one of these, they would say, would have a specific function, especially if we were talking about Dangkwe, which I did in one of the other videos in regards to Su Wutong. But for the general, I guess, fast cooking for a, uh, for a French press, we're going to use the tendrils. Well, why? Well, the tendrils cook faster, there's more, it's thinner, and they have more surface area. So when you buy this at the store, you'll be able to see a whole bunch of tendrils. They'll be a lot thicker, believe it or not, than this, because this is somewhat dried. It's reconstituted a little bit, but even the, this piece is still hard. But we don't want to waste this, so I'm going to show you what to do with this after we take this off. So I'm just going to go up to the top here. I'm going to break it off. Very easy. We take the tendrils, put it in. Now we have this. So what's next? So here's the easy part. So we have our herbs inside of the very large French press. Now this is a hot water dispenser that we got from Taiwan. And it's very useful because we can just dump hot water into anything whenever we need to. So I'm just going to dump hot water into here. And I'm going to let the herbs sit for a little bit in the hot water, maybe, I don't know, five minutes or so, because some of the herbs are still dried, and using the heat on the inside will help reconstitute them a little better. But again, this is enough for maybe three cups. And the nice part about this hot water heater is, is when this water is done, you'll still have the herbs inside. You can just come over and you can just fill it right back up again. And this is pretty good for about maybe three to four uh, different, um, uh, three to four fillips, especially with a size like this. If you have more herbs, it's going to be stronger too. But right now it actually looks like a nice color. You can see it's a little bit amber there, and that's from the herbs themselves. Uh, using less will keep a harsher taste, I should say, because some of the herbs themselves, like ginseng, ginseng can be bitter and it needs kind of a sweet uh, taste to uh, compensate for it. Strangely enough, Korean ginseng, I believe, is a lot sweeter than most of the other ginseng. So if you are going to get Korean ginseng, just kind of remember not to add too much sweet. And of course, as much as I hate to say it, if it is too bitter and it still doesn't taste right, you can always add more fruits. You can add uh, a peach or an apple or something else that you feel would fit it. Try to stay away from throwing in, you know, sugar packets and whatnot. I mean, if you really need to, you can. Everybody's still talking about stevia and whether or not that's safe. But again, it's really up to you. And you don't have to follow what I'm doing here either because this recipe is yours. You can find what you like. And that's kind of what one of the focuses on the book that we're going to release pretty soon. But I'll talk about that later. So the other thing I want to mention is, is on this side what we have is rice cooker. And I'll open this up and you can see on the inside we actually have some rice at the moment. But I wanted to show you this because I want to show you what you can do with the head of the ginseng after you're done with this. Now again, we don't want this to go to waste. You can toss this into a soup, you can, you know, try to cut it up with chicken, but what you really should do first is if you have a rice cooker like this, just before you start making the rice and you have the water level up to, you know, just a little about it, put this right in the middle of it. Now what'll happen is, is th this ginseng piece will cook with the rice. The rice itself will not only absorb the nutrients of this, but it will absorb the taste too. So it gives you kind of a, a different flavor. Now, I've gone crazy with this once. I've actually used this and I've used chicken bouillon on the inside. And it makes a really nice tasting rice. Right, it makes a really nice tasting rice. And it's also very good because it, it takes the nutrients out of this. Once it's done, this is nice and soft. You can actually cut this up 
and you can stir fry it with chicken, you can throw it into soups, you can, you can even let it dry again and you can use it to chew on because it's a, lot, it's a lot smaller. But these are the type of ideas that you can get with this. So now we're going to talk about more of the traditional way of cooking tea and that's on the stove top. Now I have a very nice little uh, clear cooking pot that's right here and this is glass. You want to try to stay away from metal. Basically traditionally they use a, a clay pot or they use glass. Uh, there are specific ones that have like handle on the side that you can use but if you have glass that's good enough. And again this kind of cooks the same way. What you're doing is you're taking the herbs like I'm going to take you know three pieces of ginseng, uh, excuse me, three pieces of gansao, take a handful of gochitsa and I'm going to use two pieces of tatsao and you would just fill this up with water and you just cook it on the stove um, with the ginseng itself depending on how long you're going to cook this I don't think you're going to cook it for long but again you're going to try and want to cook the tendrils because again it's the it's the easiest to cook and then you can use this and then you can cook in the rice. The, as I was saying though, if you don't have a rice cooker, you don't want to, steaming this is probably the best way to do it. it it's always better to uh, steam it first. Uh, someone else had actually told me that if you're going to make chicken soup with this, cook this in the water first before you cook the chicken. You want to try and grab as much nutrients out of this as possible. And that's pretty much the idea of this herb. Is it is, again, it is a treasure. You want to try to get as much out of it as you, see, as you possibly can. So we're going to take this off. We're going to toss it in. And I'll be right back when I fill it with water. So as I'm waiting for the teapot to heat up, what I'm going to do is we'll take a look at the tea inside the French press. Now it's got a nice color to it. It's been about 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do just for decorations, I'm going to pour some into this nice little teapot that my mother-in-law from Taiwan got me. They have this you know, nice little design. And we'll take a look and see what the color looks like. Pop this into here. You can see the tea on the inside here. You can still see the datsao and the gochitsa. So this was good for one, two, maybe three cups. And again, we can still fill this right back up again with the hot water. Either, you know, hot water from a dispenser or hot water from a kettle. It really doesn't matter. So long as you let it sit for a little bit, the longer you let it sit, the stronger it's going to be. Put the cap back on. Pour it out here. Let's see what it looks like. Looks nice. It's not very strong still, but it looks nice. I could have used some more herbs inside of it, but the idea here is, let's see how it tastes. Let's see. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's still a little light. I think adding a bit more then just a handful of gochitsa would actually do something. I actually think it needs more time as well. I wasn't too thrilled with the taste of the first one, so I added a couple handful more of gochitsa just to sweeten it out. Gochitsa has a, has a nice flavor, but gansao and ginseng can make things uh, more of a, an earthy flavor, and it's not really to some people's taste. Uh, yeah, everybody more attributes good tasting to sweet. Uh, Sometimes earthy isn't that bad for you. It all depends on how you're feeling that day. But um, I let it sit for a little bit. This is still cooking. And uh, I want to see how it turned out now. So I'm going to pour myself another one. Oh, that's much better. Even just adding an extra handful of gochitsa can change the taste. It's gone from earthy to fruity and if you add it even a little bit more I think maybe the fruit would be overbearing as well so as you're cooking you know you do have to learn you have to find this balance and that's really a lot of the, how Chinese medicine works as well as you're looking for balance um, even chefs chefs are looking for balances of tastes and this really is no different I mean this is just a tea but for some people, they cook soups like this as well. Yeah, it's horrible tasting sometimes. You get 
all these uh, herbs that you know taste like uh, trees and bark and all this other stuff. But strangely enough, from the people that I spoke to, if the body wants it, no matter how bad it tastes, they're going to want, they're going to crave it. They're going to want more of it. And it's just, just this very strange phenomenon don't know why it happens, it's just the body knows, oh well this is good, I want more of it. And I mean, that could be the same thing with a kid getting sweets. He thought having sweets is great, so of course he's going to want more. Um, if they don't like it, or the body doesn't like it, of course they're going to do everything they possibly can to not take it. But, again, it's always good to try, it's always good to find that balance of what's good for you. We have a book coming out, which is uh, Chinese Herbal Tea. And what it does is it basically talks about herbs such as this. Um, they give you little, you know, simple formulas that you can make at home uh, by yourself that you can also find with uh, ingredients that you can get either at your local market or Whole Foods or Asian market if you have one close by. I'm sure you can probably find some of them on, uh, uh, on the internet or on Amazon as well. You just don't want to pay too much for them. And, while organic is expensive, you have to remember that a lot of Chinese herbs have sulfur dioxide inside of them. And really, preservatives really don't need those. Those aren't too useful to have. Even the herbs that we sell on the picture here the store, I don't want to have any of that stuff on there. I would just rather have just the dry herbs that you can go and cook yourself. Uh, you're not going to keep them for very long anyway. Just take it, cook it, drink it, you're good to go. So, in the book, what I do is I have the description of each of the herbs, simple description. I mean, we don't have to go into too much detail about a lot of the, the theory behind it. It's just basically like, you know, ginseng is good for energy. Gochitsa is good for, uh, you know, nourishing the blood, getting better blood supply. Um, Gansao is a pretty good harmonizer. The licorice is a very good harmonizer. You have chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum is good for clearing heat. You can use gochitsa, chrysanthemum, and gansao, licorice, during the summer to help clear heat. Um, I actually made that for my Chinese nutritional class at, uh, at school back oh, 15 some odd years ago. Uh, I also made um, muffins made from mulberry, gochitsa, and longyan, which, longyan, which is also mentioned in the book. That's the uh, dragon's eye. Uh, again, there are a lot of things that you can do, and all you have to do is just play around with it. And I give you the instructions, tell you how to cook it, tell you how to mix it, which ones work together, which ones don't work together, uh, which ones you should probably stay away from mixing. So the teapot is cooking very nice now. What I did is I turned the, um, the heat down to low. Uh, we have numbers here. I have two or one. It's basically in the simmer range. You don't want to keep it boiling. I mean, it's good to bring it to a boiling point, and you can see a little bubbles from it right now, but it's best to bring it back down again after a little bit. And now all you have to do is just put... I had the cap on it. I took it off. But all you need to do is just put the cap back on, Keep it on low, let it simmer for about 10-15 minutes, and then it's ready to drink. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned a little about how we, you know, can cook herbs at home. And as always, if you have any questions or you'd like to see something, you know, just write it down in the comments below. We'll take a look at it, and who knows, maybe we'll be able to show it on the next, on the next video. So I hope you all have a good day. I'll do the YouTube thing of like, comment, subscribe, and take care until next video. Bye.